Today's podcast has been sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. So go download DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code wide open. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL and get 200 in free bets instantly, only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code wide open. Uh, you know what's the most annoying thing in the world? I what's that, right? When you get a call from a telemarketer, have y'all gotten calls from a telemarketer? Of course. Yeah. Almost every day. Ben gets a lot. And I don't really know why Ben gets so many for some reason. I think it was an insurance I, thing that you I got do him. get a lot. They see a sucker coming from a mile away. <laughs> and you always are so kind to them. You're like, hello? And you're like, yep, nope, okay. And then you would sometimes even hear them out. You used to like listen to their spiel and go, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Yes, kind of. At the end of the day, most of these people are just telemarketers just doing their job. They're not scam like no. call call centers. Totally agree with that. So I'm not going to just be like, hey, yo, how about you piss off, mate? I've no, so <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not going to he's not gonna turn Australian yeah. on him. No, no, no. So the reason that I'm on this calling list of uh, its insurance telemarketers oh. is because... I must have gotten like a Facebook or an Instagram ad of like looking for insurance because I was looking for insurance at the time. Mm. And then I was like, I'm looking for insurance. And then I give them all of my information oh. willingly. Now you effed up. But <laughs> yeah. no, that did get me really good insurance rates though. So it's like, it's kind of worth I it. I got a good rate, but I also have to deal with this now. And it, it goes in waves where I'll get like 10 to 20 different calls in the span of like five days and then it'll just go like a week of nothing and then i'm like oh i'm off the list finally and then i get another call from another like north dakota address and i'm like oh and it just goes silent i'm like damn it i'm back on the list oh okay well when you say that they're from like an nd area code that's why they're still a little scammy because they'll use your area code to call you so that you think that it's coming from your area And every single time I look at the number and I go, is this the, yeah, yep. is this the, uh, the insurance number or not? And I'm like, ah, I better just answer just in case. My thought on it is every time you do it, my dad does it. He goes, yep, please, please take me off your list. Do you think that it, they even take you off a list or do you think you just like, is it even worth saying that? Or are you just better off going like, no, I'm good. Thank you. Have a nice day. Cause you don't want to be a dick. I agree. No, They're doing their they, job. They keep calling you. But do they like, obviously the, the message was across that you do not want what they want. So do you In think my that, experience, they keep calling. Do you think, yeah, saying, take, please take me off your list actually gets you off the list. No, but neither does the other one. And it seems like that one's a little bit more effective where it'll get by you like two weeks span versus five days. I've got a solution for you. Block the numbers. No, oh. you can set your iPhone so it blocks any number that you don't have in your contacts Yeah, I list. can't do yeah, that. It is the best Why? thing ever. Yeah, no, I can't do can, that. Dude, you have no idea how terrible that is for business of like <laughs> everyone else trying to get a hold of you that then thinks that you ignore them for months on end, which you might actually if, if they aren't blocked. And then they finally come to us. Hey, I've been trying to get a hold of Ken for the last six months. So I have this really good opportunity for you guys. And Ken's just been straight up ignoring me. The problem is I get at least 100 calls a day from kids asking, say, hey, what's up? So I just like, I can't take all those calls. So I just have to go. That's actually 100 contact. calls a that day? Is, yes. One kid <laughs> called me 15 times oh last night. Okay, that's okay, pretty If annoying. that is the case, so that yeah, is super annoying. He but. does, dude. I've seen it. Like, we think we get a lot. Ken gets so many, and he gets the persistent ones, too. Yeah. Oh, and that, that actually If does they want to get a hold of me, they'll shoot me a text, or I'll already have them on my contacts list. Yeah, so like our voicemail's dead because I still want people to leave me a voicemail. If you need to get a hold of me, leave me a voicemail. I think it's tough text. with you though because even if you do get the message, you don't respond for weeks on end. Unless it's important. Yeah, but how many times do you respond to a, a message or a call like four weeks later? Often. <laughs> How? How can you not just like do it right off the bat? I respond to some right away, some a day later, some a week later, some two weeks later, some three weeks yeah, later. Yeah, but wh- why? Obviously, later. you do that, but why do you choose to respond to some four weeks later? I don't, well, because I put it on my to do list and then I still got it. I have but a really. Do you think it takes more time to physically go, I need to text Stevie Wonder back about his thing? And then you go, call Stevie Wonder back. Or is it easier to just go, hey, Stevie, let's. Yes, it is. But then get that I, Wonder Bread done. Then I have then. to like sometimes mentally tax myself with whatever that person is 
potentially requesting. That that's true. Don't right. you feel no, like it's valid both ways? If you ignore somebody or you're not responding to a certain thing that you have to deal with for a set amount of time, doesn't that weigh on you? Yeah, a little. Don't you just want to get it out of the way? It, no, it weighs on me more. Honestly, it weighs on me more when I like respond to them right away and then they respond right away and then I'm like, here we are again. If if they're requesting something, oh, something shit. that is. We're like, being productive. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily because like you, it's like maybe let's say it's a buddy who want like now I just tell them like I can't do it. But if it's a buddy that's like, hey, can you uh, do something for me? And then I'm like, maybe. And then they'll be like, can you design me a wrap for my dirt bike? And then I, and now I just be like, ah, dude, no way. I don't have time. I'd love to, but, and it's stuff like that. Like when they're trying to get something out of you, it's so hard to just like drag them along. Was that a know. subtweet? That felt like that was directed at, directly at me. At you? Oh no. <laughs> you know how many times I've asked Micah to make me a wrap for something? Like that no, was no. so specific. It's funny. Cause no, it's not at you at all because creating a rap for you is like on it's like being on payroll oh okay yeah all right never mind i felt a little attacked there for a second i have a question uh how do you respond to telemarketers ryan oh i've gotten them because my numbers on some of the shopify stuff so like some guy from some company will be like hey i can get you text marketing and i just go hey we're good like no, thank you. And then you hang up. So you like, don't yell at them or nothing? No, 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 no psycho move. Number. <laughs> you don't need the like, I used to do the whole thing where you listen to the spiel and then you're like, yeah, maybe you will. Let me talk to the guys. And then they keep calling you back. It, and that's a little more specific to a, a business decision. But like, it's pretty easy to just be like, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm not interested. Bye. You know what you have more than telemarketers, Ryan? Financial advisors. Yeah, I do. I have a lot of them. And and that and credit card offers. Yeah, for those guys it's tough cuz you know them. Yeah. And then you're just like, "Ah, I'm sorry. I already got a guy. He's taking care of it." And it's done. So at least now that I have it taken care of, it's way easier. But when I didn't, I'd be like, "Ah, yeah, I'll, I'll hear you out." That is a tough position too because usually when you tell them like, "Oh, I've got a guy." They're always like, I'll beat "I can him. beat him." Yeah, and then it's like, "Ah, oh, man." You feel bad too like now that my sister has graduated or her friends have like they're getting into that, so then they'll start calling me and I'll be like, "Hey, listen, Dude, you can do this. I'm sorry that I'm shutting you down, but like, good luck <laughs> with your career. So that you're talking about those are the people you personally know. Uh, or yeah, or there's like, hey, Sydney gave me your number, and yeah. uh, we went to college together, and I'm just starting out selling insurance. I just feel bad, you know. You're just chopping down some kid's dream, but yeah, I had one where the guy gave me the spiel and everything, and I was like, look, man, I'm not interested. I've got a guy, and to be completely honest, I get one of these calls at least once a week. Mm -hmm especially around this age because we have so many friends that are now graduating doing and doing it. And um, I was like, dude, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, how about, how about we grab lunch? And yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, man, I'm really busy. Yeah. I'm really I, busy. I don't know bro. And you, you could tell, you could just hear it in my voice. And he was like, uh, all good, man. Yeah. Sounds but it's good. Probably tough cold calling people like that and like actually getting, a hundred no's to one yes. Like that, that's that got to be tough. Good for them. If you're doing it, keep doing it. Dude, some people are just meant for that with sales. Like they're yeah. just like relentless. Mm -hmm. And those are the guys that make the big bucks. Like mm -hmm. they can just constantly be shut down and rejected. And then finally it just clicks. clicks. And Back next thing you know, you're into $100,000 in penny stocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan Belfort. <laughs> Uh, back to Ken though. I think it's tough for him because he gets so many customer service things like all day. He is bombarded with personal requests for like little jobs for him to do. And he's pretty damn good at it. I don't know how many emails he gets a day, but he probably takes care of 99.5% of them. But occasionally one person will slip through the cracks and then they send a DM like Ken's been ignoring me for three months and I, my shirt sucks and all this. And we're like, Ken, can you take care of this? Or like, Ken, what the fuck? You need to respond to people. But I think in general, he does a pretty good job. He's, I, you're running the customer service of at least a three man team. I've never met somebody who hates dealing and talking to people more than Ken, <laughs> but who's, has to do who's in customer service, dude. The problem is so many people, they're like, where is they, they, they give you like this little morsel of information, <laughs> but it's not like all the information you need to figure something out of what's going on. And it's the other thing is a lot of people will send it to our Instagram account and nobody goes through every little DM that we get in our Instagram account. Little minute. So it might DM. go like 
nobody might see that for ever. Yeah. And that one's and tough because like if they're actually missing their order, um, but they just give you like almost no information, that means you need to follow up with them and then wait for their response back with more information to yet still figure out what the issue is. Yeah. It's so nitpicky and annoying to deal with, but it's so important because I think our returning customer rate is like 65%. Pretty so like crazy. Drop after drop, 65% of the people that order are going to come back. And if they had a bad experience, then they're not going Probably to. And, and I do that all the time yeah. when I'm ordering something. And if it's a pain in the butt to ship it back or if they don't give me the option or or there's no communication at all, then I'm just like, dude, I'm never ordering. Or it's like a again. bad shirt. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've ordered other YouTubers merches, merch and like it was garbage. Like ours is ours is nice. Like we make sure it's good. We definitely do. And also like people have a tendency to uh, speak out loud to to their peers and friends. You could have uh, like three good experiences and then one bad experience. And then if the experience was bad enough, you'd bring it up to your friends, and mm-hmm. then they'd probably be like, well, "I'm probably not going to order either." I've heard both sides of things where they're like, "Ken's been ignoring me for six months," but I've also heard the complete opposite of Ken is so on top of it. He's all, he responds to my emails at nine p.m. at night. And got my order fixed right away. So I'll give you some credit there, Ken. Do great with the customers and maybe not so great with, with our immediate friends that are trying to <laughs> all right, get I'm, a hold of you. I'm going to go through my my recent calls list. Just look at all the red ones. The red ones are people not in my contact list right. and that just get auto-blocked. There's, oh, there, my gosh. They're more Ken, than you 50% need a new phone red. number, dude, for your personal I, phone. I, I, you need a business phone. In that I was personal. considering setting up my, a new phone number. <laughs> I, don't Damn. Think crap, I don't think it'd be that crazy for Ken to have a business I, phone. I don't either. I think it'd be worth it for that matter. He could have his government name phone and then his... <laughs> His Ken phone. But I'm also Ken thinking has two Ken phones just, in his pocket. Two separate lives, walking dude. around with like, you know, the people that like set their phones down and there's two of them. They're walking yep. around holding two phones, pulling them both out. Be a real businessman. It's pretty Ken's, baller. But Ken's I'm scrolling on both hands. I'm also thinking even <laughs> if we have Reddit accounts for everything, even if we have this second phone where the number is semi-public, you know, we're not going to like post it everywhere, but it's something you reach. Ken can't carry that phone on him. It's going to be buzzing oh, all just day. Like two SIM cards. No, nah, dude, you got to flex and get two phones. <laughs> you can. imagine Ken Akimbo scrolling? Yeah, he's got, <laughs> I can. I can see it. He's got Twitter up on one and Reddit, Reddit up on the other. other. Taking in all That's the information. So much <laughs> Ken like starts getting like the the lizard eyes where they go out because oh, no. he's looking at both of them. <laughs> Taking That's scrolls a, to a whole nother yeah. level. But I did want to give you credit, Ken. You do a damn good job with customer service. And if you have ever ordered something, you've dealt with Ken personally. And I hope you've had a good experience. And also speaking and of if, 60% of returning customers, only incredible. 50% of the people are uh, subscribed to this podcast. So if you're listening now and you are not subscribed, please do. I'm cracking up at Ken having lizard eyes. Yeah. <laughs> going, going cockeyed to scroll on two Look phones. Like Don Vito. <laughs> All right, I want to do a bit where I pop up YouTubers' cars. Mm -hmm. Now, we've all watched the videos of them being built or them doing anything with them on the internet and then ask you guys what you rate them 1 to 10. All right, also, I want to say when I was going through and trying to narrow down just a couple of cars to do, bro, so many YouTubers have so many unique and cool cars these days, and it was really difficult. But all right, first one up, Stradman's Lamborghini Aventador Pirelli Edition with Liberty Walk Wide Body Kit. Rosa Cantus paint and white pinstriping. The paint job is one of three painted in this color in the world, and it's got a custom all white and pink interior. Uh, the story behind it was it was an in an accident with a police car before he bought it, and now it's a salvage title that he completely rebuilt. Oh, so pretty cool. But with his dad, I think too. Or he finished it on the day that his dad passed away, mm. so he kind of it's in memory of his dad, but. All right, okay, Mike, 1 out of 10. Uh, 9.9. CJ? I'd have to say 10. Right? Really? See, I think you can put a kit in that color, in that wing, on a heavy modified Lambo like that, so I think it all works together pretty well, but it seems to be a bit overstated for me. I'm going to play Devil's Avocado, 8.2. So it's still pretty, pretty good. It, it's very loud, and I think it works for a YouTuber. It looks amazing. I guess the only bad part about Aventadors in general is the interior is very outdated, like the screen and all that. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I think. Why is that? Well, most Lambos are. I think most no, Lambos but don't. it's even worse. If, like, guess, and that's a more expensive Lamborghini. If that's I had to guess, it would just be. I, I remember when I saw a Bugatti interior, and someone explained that they try to keep it uh, timeless. Yeah. yeah, I would say they're playing in on that. Which no, is kind if of, you look at it, it's not. It just oh, okay. It, it, 
I don't know, but they just haven't changed it. I don't think. I but think, of all the things, my favorite part is the full custom interior. Like yeah, that's what yeah. makes. That's what to me sets it apart. His white dash, I guess, is like problematic because this it reflects onto the the windshield. Windshield it's so angled, it's so and uh, I guess it's kind of hard to see. Everything about it is perfect. So loud, it looks like one of the fastest cars you'd ever see on the road. The only reason I took it the one tick off was because it it's pink. I I love that it's painted, but I would do it like any other color besides pink. But it still looks beautiful. I mean, you're really never going to see a wide body Aventador like this, but you're really never going to see a pink wide body with white wheels, white interior, big ass wing. Very true. I think loud beautiful. exhaust, everything about it. One dude. of a kind. For it's sure. A, it's it's such a YouTuber car. It's so over the top. It's ridiculous. Um, I, love I, it. I think he absolutely killed it on it. Mm -hmm. Here's like a side shot of it. That I think is really shows like the angles of it, mm. how sharp it is. I love that. It's the, such a beautiful the convertible, car. the spider. Yeah. I'm actually not sure. I think it's on static suspension. It's got a front lift on it, I believe. Mm. But a lot of these cars are on airbags. But people that have airbags or install shops that install a lot of uh, airbags or or static suspension on cars, they always say that airbags are kind of a pain in the butt, and they never are as good as you would want them to be doesn't work very well on my homer <laughs> ryan knows firsthand such a beautiful car i'd give this a 9.5 nice i love that car I, I gotta stay with 10 all right guys quick little break in the podcast to tell you about today's sponsor DraftKings sportsbook as you guys all know we love watching the nfl around here and especially the minnesota vikings as i'm wearing their jersey right now but when it comes to our sports betting especially the nfl we use DraftKings sportsbook as they are an official sports betting partner of the nfl and on top of that, to kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can get a no-sweat bet each day of the wild card round this weekend. Just place any NFL bet of your choice, and if it loses, you'll get a free bet back up to $10. Action so good, why bet NFL playoffs anywhere else? So go download DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code WIDEOPEN. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL and get 200 in free bets instantly, only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code Wide open. That's wide open, one word. Must be 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario and Ohio. Bonus issued as free bets. One free bet issued based on amount of initial losing NFL bet up to $10. Eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. Eligibility and terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms let's go vikings and let's get back into the podcast shaking it up a little bit here whistle and diesel's 2022 amg g63 otherwise known as a g wagon this thing it's got bigger turbos on it pushing a thousand horsepower acropovic exhaust lift kit and 33 inch tires i'd give this one a 9.5 dude i hate to say it but 10 i love it Really? <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. Because this is That's the coolest G wagon I've ever seen. Yeah. This is more of like a, more of a stock car. You know, mm -hmm. obviously yeah. it's got the little cosmetic changes to it, and it's faster. But overall, you're gonna look at it, and it it mostly looks stock. I think it's beautiful, right? Well, it's sweet because he modified it, but it still works. Like he's jumping it right there. Like you could have went and you could have modified it either lower or put such a big lift on it that it becomes unfunctional. So where he nailed it was it's fast AF. And it sounds pretty solid, but yet you can do stuff like that with it. So, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd give it, like, in the nines. It really is a great-looking car, and I think the coolest part about it is that he really showed how capable it is. Mm -hmm. My only beef is the exhaust. Sounds kind of tinny, which I know people are in eh on, but I think it, it just... For a $9,000 mm -hmm. $9, exhaust? Exactly. I would have expected it to be a little better, but it's loud and it's sweet. I guess what I find most interesting is that after he uploaded this video, I like G-Wagons, but then... A video of Whistling Diesel basically destroying this thing made me like them 10 more. times more. I went, what? I mean, obviously he tested it and showed what, what it can do, but I was like, I want one. That's a nice-ass car, and it's badass, too. And what too. it can do? Yeah, I mean, the suspension, pretty, I don't even mm -hmm. know. It's got to weigh a bunch. Whatever, Whoever built the suspension for that deserves an award. I, I feel like it's hard to have a luxury vehicle. That's a luxury, like, bougie vehicle, but it's still badass in my yeah. opinion. And that's because of, like, maybe the, the red, but also just the overall look of it. It's just a badass vehicle. I, I like it a lot. $300,000 vehicle. Yeah. Tough, and that's though. obviously with dealer markup, and I think he bought it in the worst possible time. But that is a lot of money for basically a glorified Jeep. But as he proved, 
it's a it's lot. Way better it's than a Jeep. lot better than a Jeep. I just want to play the clip of him jumping it for anyone that hasn't seen it. God, that was <laughs> such a <laughs> ooh, 91 feet. Imagine if he would have rolled that thing, dude. No one there that day was expecting to see that. that much of a boot. Dude, I have been to those sand dunes and I have tried to jump them. Well, I have jumped them in a side by side with side by side bog, and we probably went. Not, not even that far, and it was terrifying. So I can't imagine doing it in like an eight thousand pound car. I think His, the thing about that video that really makes it stand out is ninety nine percent of people who own G wagons will never take that thing off the pavement, and he's just full sending it. Yeah, and it actually held up, which is cool. All right, the next car is TJ Hunt's two thousand twenty C eight Corvette twin turbo, fifteen hundred horsepower with a fully custom Street Hunter wide body kit which is his own wide body kit. So it, the, the thing is like completely one of one, insanely fast. And personally, I think it looks amazing. This is my favorite wide body kit on any of the C8s. Uh, what do you guys think? One out of 10. 9.9 9 for me. I hope you picked ug uglier YouTuber <laughs> cars because I feel like we're giving all these. I'm likes. giving this a seven, dude. Okay. Really? Seven, maybe a seven and a half. Reason why I'm saying that, I honestly don't think it looks that good with the wide body kit. The rear is too wide. Compared to the front, it looks too wide. It's not proportionate. And there's often times where I see a wide body kit get thrown on a vehicle and it's just like too much. Like Stratman's looked good. This is too wide in my personal opinion. And I don't really like the wing either. It just kind of looks, doesn't look right to me. I'd rather just have a, a factory one. The thing I do like about it is it isn't a, a bolt on kit. You know, mm. it, it doesn't have the bolts holding it on. I don't know how it's fastened. It probably has bolts, but yeah, I like that from it's the, smooth from the backside. Yeah, from but the you back. don't you don't see the rivets. Yeah, right? exactly. Because yeah. I think that's the one thing that can sometimes make body kits look cheesy. Is it looks like they are bolted onto the outside of a car, <clears> which they are. Agree with that. I agree that it does look a little bit cheaper. Here, this one looks I, a little bit more factory. When I saw it at SEMA, I thought it looked uh, kind of homemade. Personally, mm -hmm. really, I, I got nothing I guess against you DJ did Hunt see it in person. I'm though. just saying I thought it seemed kind of homemade. Like it just it, it looks wonky to me. I think one thing that it could maybe change, let's say the rear fenders weren't as wide and this was a Z06. I know that would change a lot, but the fenders are already wider on that. I think that would look tasteful, but I think it looks incredible. I The color is like amazing color, for me, yeah. but still would change it. The wheels though, the silver like three-piece, whatever, HRE wheels, unreal. I, That's my favorite part of the car. I love that silver wheels are coming, coming back. back. My like dream is a black, either matte black or just black car and then get some really nice polished wheels kind of like mike has on a subaru the same color you already kind of got that with your hummer right that's true <laughs> yeah kind of but i mean yeah it just i think that's such a cool look that went away for a while that i think now should come back i, think, I agree with that i think that tj ran into a lot of problems with the twin turbo kit on this because the ecu was so hard to unlock or, or do anything they ever, to, or was actually, it still maybe like they, a maybe piggyback. they didn't even unlock Yo. it but it's so hard to do anything with the C8 platform. You want to know what's even crazier though is uh, Amelia Hartford. She yeah. already twin turboed the, her her fucking Z06. Z06. No. Yeah, how how C8 does it work? Uh, they ha they don't have it tuned yet, but she slapped them on, oh. started it up, revved it. I was like mind blown. That Did that'll you? be a crazy car. A Z06 C8 twin, twin turbo. turbo. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it sounds like, like a Ferrari. Like, yeah. yeah. A twin turbo Ferrari. <laughs> but yeah, the only turnoff. So this car is it's now for sale, and it is for sale for two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a Corvette. That's not even a Z06. That's a lot of money. No way. Yeah, a lot of money. Lot. No one's gonna buy that for two fifty. Yeah, I don't know somebody you know? who's maybe a big TJ fan and yeah, watched the whole build. I've thought about that, and I've always wondered like, do people buy people's cars because of whose they were? How God knows they're not buying mine because of the, I owned it. But, you know, do you want a car? You're like, oh, TJ Hunt owned that. That's really think... cool. Like, even if The Rock owned a car, I don't think it would make me pay a significant markup to be like, this is The Rock's car. Granted, he has some really cool cars, and I love his I don't charger. think anybody that has 250 grand to spend on a C8 Stingray Corvette is going to buy pay extra because a YouTuber such as TJ Hunt owned it prior. Also, The Rock, they? maybe that's cooler. That's a lot cooler or like a music artist, but I don't think anybody that's got money like that gives a fuck if a YouTuber owned it prior. <laughs> also, do you think anybody with that type of money is buying a car like that? Like that looks like yeah, what a 20-year-old a, a yeah. would so it design would have a car. To, and I, I still think it looks good, but I think 
Like it looks like Stradman's cool. Aventador. Yeah, his Aventador I think looks better. It looks yeah. more proportionate. But I've already said that. So would you rather have this or a Z06 at the same price? Z06. Z06 by far. Hundred percent. It, it ha- it's a stock Z06. Yeah, probably that. Yeah, I, w- I would go with that too. Really? You get yeah. to yeah. You yeah, drive that. It's way cooler. Than yeah, it's stock Z06. Yeah, I and and keep in mind, fifteen hundred cool. horse. Yeah, I did kind of forget about that when I said the Z06, but still, I still think I'd take a Z06 <laughs> with Same. the different motor. If it was the standard Z06 upgrade where they just supercharged the current engine, it would be closer. Gotcha. I'd give this thing a 8.8, eight, and the only reason I would give it anything more if it was red. I like mm-hmm. red, mm-hmm. obviously, because I had a red C8. But red would if, if it was a red one, I'd probably give it a 9.5. All right, last one. Had to throw into the mix one of our own vehicles. Uh, so I did our SEMA truck. It's, it's a 2019 F350 built by Banker at Custom Offsets, specifically for SEMA as a SEMA build. It's on 26-inch rims with 40-inch tires around them, 8-inch coilover lift kit, custom front and rear bumper, powder-coated and paint-matched, pretty much everything underneath it. Uh, it's deleted, 5% all around, allegedly. allegedly. And, of course, train horns. Oh, and and the drop hitch. Oh, pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. I got to give this thing a 9.5. I, I really love this truck. It's not perfect, but it is everything you could ask for out of a, a show lifted truck. And my favorite colors too, black and red. Yeah, I think I'd have to give it like a 9. Actually, maybe a little higher. I don't know, but it's tough. <laughs> I wouldn't give it a perfect 10 just because it's not a limited or a platinum. That's but right, I man. think it is... I mean, it doesn't really get any better, in yeah. my personal opinion, when it comes to lifting up, you know, these like, big lifted bigger trucks. Isn't They're all better, relatively yeah. the same after a certain point. Mm-hmm. Rides, like, not that great, but drives really good, just rides rough. Probably time to send it down the road soon, sooner rather than later. Right? I, so yeah, I think it's the perfect mix of, like, how overstated and loud it is, but yet it's still not ridiculous. Like, it doesn't have pinstriping all over it. It's not, like a weird color the black and red is a really nice accent especially with all the red underneath i think there's actually spacers on those tires and i think if you took the spacers out and pulled the wheels in a little more it would look a little less when you see it down the road it's got like this really big yeah. like it, <laughs> it looks like you put a smaller truck on top of it because the wheels are so far out i think it would look a little more proportional from the back or the front okay and i think it would also make it not a walking by vi- or a driving violation constantly it would help and that truck really surprised me because i did not like it from the start but i came around to it what how about it? No- knowing how it drives what, what do you guys think about like the driving i don't mind that it. You i get? don't mind it at all I don't mind it either. I don't I don't mind the drive. I just don't like how rough it is. Like it's it starts to get a little bit jarring after a while, at least for me. I hate how it drives. I absolutely hate well, it. Well it doesn't drive itself, Ken. That's probably the <laughs> <biggest> <laughs> problem. Can't I I, I don't like how loose the front end is. It, like it, it feels like I'm driving a twenty year old truck. It's not what I like. As a guy who drives a twenty year old vehicle, that thing seems pretty pretty in line yeah it's like it's it's your outlook coming into it because i i know it has two steering stabilizers on the front like what more can you really do i'm sure there's a little bit more but like for for how it is and how it's set up i mean it's all pulled out all the stops for it so i think it drives okay i think looks wise incredible one of my favorite looking trucks even seeing all the ones at sema i think this one is is well sized where you can actually still drive it Mm -hmm. everything not a single expense was spared on the vehicle, which is the coolest part about like a, a company like Custom Offsets. They got the budget to ball out on it mm-hmm. and to make like the content. I'm sure they got a bunch of things for free. So like not a single corner was cut, which is really nice because we looked at a couple other big SEMA trucks, big lifted trucks before we bought this one. And like you can tell like people that build it try and just maybe cheap out on a s- certain things that they probably shouldn't where banker building it was just like mm-hmm. fuck it yeah 140 grand yeah, i think is what he said it. was it into this enough. truck wow so you can tell it's it's really high quality but with that being said i just personally do not like anything about the truck for usability wise it just sucks if you actually want to drive it and you guys must think something else or maybe i've just driven it more than you guys but like 
you can't drive it in a city. You can't like parallel park this thing anywhere. You can barely drive it down the road without worrying about running somebody over. Every single time that I drove it, I got tickets up the wazoo. I think I had like 15 violations just throughout like a three month span of it getting pulled over three times, five violations each time. I don't know. I guess I'm just not that into like massive trucks. I think you just got the tickets and then you just didn't like it. It definitely tainted my thoughts on it. I, for me, it's just like, it's kind of what you're driving. It's almost like driving our Ram. Our Ram is inconvenient to drive comparatively to your Raptors. Like those, the Raptor, you whip right in any parking spot, stuff like that. You go drive around, you'd be like, holy shit, this thing's huge. I have to do five point turns. Like diesel trucks are difficult to drive. And I just understand that one as to be a more difficult truck to drive. You know, you're not getting the close spot uh, spot at Walmart. You're going to have to park at the end where nobody is on either side of you because the tires take up the whole parking spot. You know, like it's just kind of part of it. And I think that it doesn't suck driving. So that's what makes up for it. It is completely part of it. And I realize that it's yeah. just not really worth it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we don't even use it really anymore. I would take it to town. I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna take the SEMA truck to town. I'm going to go run errands in it, but I'm so nervous about getting pulled over. Like I, it's not worth it to me to get a $500 set of tickets just for driving that instead of one yeah. of our other legal trucks. That's kind of where it's at. It, it is a work of art, but sometimes works of art need to just stay on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I really don't think we should actually hang it on the wall. I know you were talking about that, but we hang it on the wall, just like the shifter cart one hook, hang it by one hook. I would actually probably do that. If you guys gave me the okay with, now this truck is going to go to the grave like most of the other vehicles in our possession. We're like, all right, let's destroy it or do something like that. I would actually be okay with the company taking the hit for all the money into it if that was where the truck was going to end up. On, On the, the wall? wall? No, hot take, but like we just run that thing into the ground. How? How though? I don't know. Just like doing reckless shit with it. I don't I mean it'd I be don't fun to do it. Unfortunately, it's just like uh Whistling Diesel, he wrecked that platinum. You can't wreck a truck now without being him. No, and, and I, I don't think I, we I don't think, I don't we, think we should ever should because obviously he's done that. But uh like you're just you'd have a good time. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have <laughs> any have any remorse like, doing it yeah, to yeah, that yeah. vehicle. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. Got it. Eight five years ago, you could get a Lambo drive in the snow, title Lambo driving in the snow, five million views blows up you do that now people like even people that watch your videos wouldn't click on it because they're like <laughs> great another guy driving a land on his own <laughs> been done before yeah and that's what he's now done to destruction of destruction yeah. senseless destruction but there's obviously always a reason i think with that being said though we have been throwing around the idea after i just got done shit talking it it's a great truck you want to buy it we are going to well sell i mean it you eventually. were outnumbered yeah. as far as people that like it as long as you don't have uh a lot of state troopers in your area you'll be fine or if you're not in minnesota you're literally golden yeah i think that ben would like the truck a ton if he just didn't get pulled over the two three times in it if he would have never gotten pulled over you would love it yeah i agree you just like are like terrified of getting pulled over well bro (laughs) you know how many equipment violations that i have on my record because of that truck 15 yeah yeah (laughs) yeah i actually already told you like, as far as, like, you won't even tint your Raptors because you dude, you took your exhaust off your Corvette. You just start, like, scared of that. You didn't put an exhaust on the WRX because of it. And I understand, no, like, you seem to keep I, getting pulled over, but, like, I don't know. It just seems to me, like, you would have really liked the truck if you would have just never gotten pulled over in it. You would never say a bad thing about it. You'd be like, this truck is awesome. Maybe. Probably not, though. Because hmm. you change as the soon as you still, got pulled over. This thing's still super, like, inconvenient. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm just saying that's where most of your disdain for it is because of the getting pulled over. And I think that you are, out of everyone, you are the most scared by 10 times of getting pulled over. Yeah. I don't like being pulled over. Well, yeah, I know. But, like, you're, like, scared of it. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely just have a terrible record, and I just don't want it to keep getting worse. As long as you don't got nothing in the car you shouldn't have, which I don't know why you ever would, they just give you the ticket and fucking move on you do kind of get a little tweaked out about getting pulled over yeah he's really scared of getting tickets i just get so many of them i'm just sick of them i mean understandable but it's just a ticket i guess just 
<laughs> it's not a problem. They're for not going to take you to jail as long as you're not doing anything you shouldn't be doing. Well, that was with my Corvette. I was. They said next time I get pulled over, they're going to impound my car for his exhaust. Gosh, for that's exhaust, crazy. yeah. In the state of Minnesota, I guess. That's what I mean. I feel I didn't. I feel wasn't like your Lambo like, going to get impounded for the yeah. headlights or something? I think BS? it's. I think it's more along the lines of me. I think I'm the problem. In their I feel eyes, like you drive the slowest out yeah, of all of us. That's what I mean. You. I don't You're know. Dry. Yeah. You are always getting pulled over doing legal things, but it's for some weird thing, like getting pulled over for not turning off your high beams early enough in your Lambo, and then all of a sudden... You're going like, to get this thing towed. Then, yeah, then it's then it's like, oh, I got to disconnect every aftermarket thing, and I'm going to untint the windows that are this big in the front, and like... There's certain things that just aren't worth like the fight and the headache. No, I, I agree. Like, if, if I kept getting, you know, whatever, like that that... You know, you got to change it if they're going to keep writing you tickets for it. But, like, you just are, like, scared, it seems like. Any little thing that I push the boundaries on, then I immediately get, like, in trouble for. And then they threaten to tow my my car. And I'm yeah. like, well, fuck. <clears throat> I, I don't give a shit if my window tint is 5% more or yeah. less. Like, or zero or 100% less because you didn't have any. I guess, Ben, you are the only one to get threatened yeah it's true i guess i That's haven't been true. threatened on getting tickets though i remember getting a lot of them when i was younger and it was literally like you know they were 200 dollars tickets and i was like if i get any more of these like this is my whole week's paycheck yeah. is gone yeah. now to this ticket and like this really sucks and that's where when i took all my tint off where I sold the car with the tint i was like i can't i can literally not afford to yeah. spend my entire week's pay on a ticket because of window tint you know like mm -hmm. there is points like that where it's really bullshit and uh i think it's messed up if i got pulled over going over 100 which i don't go over 100 but if i was going over 100 i'd be fucking scared yeah because i'd be like i did something wrong here whatever but like if, if i'm just cruising and they whip around get me for window tint i'm not really scared i'm just like all right well here we go again pay the ticket get on <clears throat> all right i got a I got a story okay Okay, so speaking of scams, Ryan kind of started this podcast out with scams. I will make this brief because it's kind of a long-winded story, but oh, I, yeah. I ordered, if you guys know what a Suron is, it's like an e-bike, it's a dirt bike, that kind of big wave coming through of Surons and like Telerias. So I didn't want to buy a Suron from like a dealer. They're like 4500 bucks, you know. They get them shipped over from China, but probably a bunch of them, and I didn't want to spend that much. So I was like, I'll just go on Alibaba, which I'm somewhat familiar with, and I, there's a whole bunch of vendors and I picked one and I was like, I just want to buy one. And then if the one is good, comes to my door and it checks out and it's real, then I'll buy like five or six more for the whole crew. So they're advertising them as real Surons, not an Alibaba version of a Suron, like right. not a knockoff. They're advertising as real. Yep. Yeah. And I had made that very clear in the, in the messages. I was like, I just making sure this is real. I want it to be <laughs> real. Cause I've heard of people getting not real ones and nobody wants to pay half price for a not real one yeah so i got it going and i like tried to have all my checks and just made sure it was real made sure the battery was authentic panasonic and then wire they said two grand for the bike 500 for shipping shipping is 10 days oh man 10 days that's awesome perfect wire them the money they ship it okay cool and then after about a month i'm like hey and they're like you got to check with the shipping company it's in customs in mexico mexico you now so it went from like, it went from China to Mexico. I'm like, why didn't it just go to a port in the United States? So you don't want your stuff to be in customs in Mexico because <laughs> they can do whatever they want. And so that's kind of where it started. I was like, well, why is this not shipping? And they're like, you need to pay customs. Okay, that makes sense. So I hit them up, and they're like, yeah, here's... The, and it's like, fee, 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 charge, charge, Jeez, charge, so charge, is. charge, to 990 bucks to clear it from customs. Nine ninety. Oh, shit, man. Okay. I just paid five hundred bucks to ship this thing on top of the two grand. So I'm already thirty five hundred in if I decide to pay this. I'm just still trying to feel this out. Okay, you can cash app or Venmo and well, so now they're taking you out of like no, a legit. I could have form still of, wired it if I wanted. But, but I didn't even want so to, it's not through Alibaba or anything like no, that. This is this to is the shipping company now. And oh. so I still toyed with the idea for a while and messaged the vendor back and forth. I'm just like, oh, I think if I just pay this customs charge, they'll send it. And then I paid this Venmo to just like a random dude. And 
<laughs> yeah. And then, uh, okay. they, then they were like, sweet, send the receipt. I did. And then they were like, cool. Now, do you want to pay the customs charge for the other 10? <laughs> and, like, other 10. and I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, 9,900 for the other 10. There's 11 total in the shipment. And I'm like, what? I ordered one. I ordered one. Can you just ship it? No, this shipment has 11. So if you want to pay customs for the rest, then we'll ship it. But 11, when they say, do you want to, it, could you just be like, no, I just want my one bike? Then that's what I said. And then they were like, okay, well, the shipment's 11. So, so, so you have still to. back They're and trying. forth with them on that. And then I'm like, why, the, why is there 11? 11 Surons? I wanted one. So I go to the vendor and I'm just like, hey, why there? Why is there 11? And they're like, oh, well, we normally don't just ship one. We normally, like I could read the messages, but essentially what they said, we don't normally just ship one. We usually ship 11. What? Okay. To who though? And that's what I'm like, yeah, who do like, they ship the 11 one. to? Yeah, they're like, we usually only do bulk shipments. You sure you're not getting hustled? No, I'm not sure at all. That's <laughs> okay. just the whole point of this. All right, so if you pay the the shipping then for the other 10, do you get them for free? Probably do they not, ship? Do, are they shipping 11 to you then? Well, or are you just it, yeah. are you just releasing right? That's the I, one, and then they're like, "Sweet, thanks for paying for all of them." You lost me at, at Venmoing for the customs. That shit ain't coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where I usually. I don't know if that's so, a normal. Yeah. No, you're I, in, is you're that in, normal, Ken. Like when you're Venmoing for no. customs, you, yeah, that, that shit ain't coming. That's dude. what I mean. They gave me like their <laughs> wire information, but I just didn't, didn't want to call my bank and start a whole wire. And since it was under a thousand dollars, I just did it on Venmo. But, but yes, who was that, the wire? Can you Venmo? Like, what, was it the shipping company or was it like I've I've made cus, uh, customs payment for us when we have stuff come across, and it will be like to United States Customs. Like it, it's a payment to them. Yeah, it's not it even going. Was not that. Okay, so it's it's a payment to Joe Schmo. Yeah, pretty much. So you've enrolled Pedro in Mexico and and nothing's happening. Okay, so you you wire you Venmoed the mob basically. Yeah, th and that's so that is where I lose most people with it because that is where I <laughs> fucked up. However, then that's why it got juicier. So it could just be like, yeah, I got scammed. I literally like so stupid. Like I'm not getting my bike. But then they interject this eleven, and so I asked the shipping company to send me a picture of it, and they're like, normally we don't send pictures of our shipment, but they sent me some grainy ass picture of a bunch of Suron boxes. That's it. That's all I got. I asked for more. That's all I got. So I'm like, okay. If so, I release this, will they all be shipped to my house? And they're like, yeah, it's like, this is your shipment. Okay. And then I was like, well, if these end up at my house or at the shop, they're mine. But I still can't take a risk on, they, they came up with like $7,500 to release it all. I'm not going to take that risk. However, how, then the vendor says, pay the customs charges. The bikes will get to you. And then we'll negotiate a price, a discounted price for the bikes. And what? I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, the negotiation is now they are mine. Yeah. You send yeah, them to yeah. me. No kidding. That'd be us. That'd be like us sending somebody five shirts. And then as soon as they get them being like, sweet, you're going to pay for the other four then. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And it's whack. exactly like that. And then they'd be like, well, I just ordered the one. And then we're like, well, you probably order more later though. So what? you paid for the shipping on all of them. That yeah. makes like no sense. So I don't know anything. Really. I am. I don't are know. Are you paying for this with your own money or the company money? You take a guess. Company money? No. Thank God. You guessed wrong. <laughs> My question, really from the start, is how are you buying a knockoff Suron, but it's not a knockoff version? It's, it's I, I, That's oh, what I don't understand. It's, it's like, not a, it's not that, a knockoff. Uh, the, yeah, how it's how do like these unbranded. vendors... No, no, it's branded. No, so right? like... Right? You're Surons, saying it's like saying Suron on the box and all that? Yeah, so basically Surons are made in China. Too. Isn't Suron a, a like a company though? Yeah, it's a Chinese company. Oh, it's a Chinese company. Yeah, like a oh, Chinese made. Okay, but okay, still, okay. it doesn't seem Third to bike. me that like they would have a ton of extras laying around where you could just buy one from a different company that was not Suron. I see. I don't think there's just a Suron factory in China. I, that's where I'm. I think what's at. going on is it's just like everything else with like Chinese products or most people's merch or. Like we could even use a tripod, for example. They all get made in the same place, and then yeah, you might be the the company that initially like made this it. is our thing, but they're making them in China, and then those the like vendor 
and those factories in China are not loyal to anybody. Like, like let's say you wanted to make your own Ethica style underwear. It was that. Yeah. So we tried making our own Ethica style underwear one time and we talked to these people on Alibaba, whatever. And, uh, they had pictures of Ethica and we sent, you know, to get a sample and they literally sent us Ethica underwear. So you, and they, they you gave could me the get template, the, and then they everything. were like, "Don't tell that we're that these are uh, Ethica." Yeah, and like, more than one company would say, "Yeah, we make Ethica underwear." Our beer bongs, same exact as Full Sense. Yeah, like is most of the stuff is made in China, and it's all come from the same place, or like it's just a different name on it. Especially mm-hmm. with like shirts too. Like obviously, you can get some really shitty shirts, but like for the most part, like like I'll be in shields and i'll see the same exact garment that we're printing mm-hmm. our stuff on yeah what you get from a wholesale which means that we're using some good good shit mm-hmm. but uh oftentimes i feel like everything's the same like you see people wearing that exact hat just a different thing on it mm-hmm. so what are you gonna do at this point kind of just in limbo i can't dump any more money into it i don't think that'd be yeah. smart i think we could all agree on that but how much is a is i'm you gonna a venmoing. i'm gonna <laughs> like if you keep venmoing they'll send them yeah so how much is a store on if you were to buy it like like if we were to, when we were in Washington, that dealership that they ordered a crate of them from China, I'd maybe have to talk to them more about how that is, but they were selling them. I think they said they'd sell them to us for four grand. So at this point I'm only 500 off from that. From Jeez, buying so for sure. That's, that's another can thing. Can you get yes, a refund? Like, no, I'm sure I can't get a so refund. Can you imagine though, Mike gets this and he's like, holy shit, these are like legit. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he just becomes a Saran dealer. It's, and that's what would happen if, if the one got to me and it was yeah. legit, I would take the other 10 and we all It was all an happy. opportunity for sure. Yeah. Cause then you could start selling them for, you know, a thousand bucks more or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. The missing variable in all this is that I don't know if they're legit. Also, mm-hmm. but then there is still the, I don't know if they'd even come to my door if I paid that charge. But if they weren't legit and I had 11 of them, I'd be re- like, I'd be like this is so yeah. stupid. I really wouldn't be surprised though if it shows up and it's just a, a Suron that doesn't have Suron branded on it. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. I'm just going to keep pushing to get the one. Lots of people have been asking us to ride them on the channel. And so if this all blows over and just turns to nothing, then I guess we'll just have to buy some at full price. But God, I don't know if I'd ever be able to ride it. Let me see well, the fucking electric. Dude, bikes so, and me don't so go together. Like no, that, would oh, yeah. that would not be good. I'd fucking loop that, that thing so quick. Mike, let me see the Venmo. I want to yeah. see what that's pretty funny. It, yeah, so dude. your transactions, the first transaction was that made through Alibaba. Oh. That was a wire transfer. I have all the receipts, but if it's not through Alibaba, if the invoice is not paid through Alibaba, which they, they usually try it. not to do, it's not protected. Yeah, that's why like people always try to get me into whatsapp and yep. all this other stuff but then you're not protected so there is a slight little bit of protection doing it through the app oh my gosh his oh. name's jason lawrence and it's just a big mexican dude <laughs> in a tuxedo no oh, this is wearing a tuxedo he's got class and my, i love that picture looks like he's like okay jason wait mike why did you venmo him and say who the hell is jason lawrence <laughs> that was my memo i just Said, who the hell is Jason Lawrence? All right, so Jason Lawrence, who received the Venmo for nine hundred ninety dollars from Micah, here are his last Venmo oh, transactions. Uh, Cindy Lawrence paid him for breakfast I even on, Octo- <laughs> on October 9th. Okay. Cindy Lawrence paid him for prescription meds on September thirtieth. <laughs> Cindy Lawrence also paid him September twenty eighth for groceries. You ain't getting that money back. Car not, tags, new kitty supplies, pet supplies and food, dinner, Disney chores, chores, chores. I'm sure he I'm sure his Venmo is <laughs> hooked up like with he, customs though. Yeah, he fucking asks Siri and goes, What do people <laughs> yeah. do on Venmo? Dude, I think oh, my. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely not getting the money back, but like I guess at the end of the day, it's still up to the shipping company because they took There the, is they, no shipping company. It's Jason Lawrence, who is a fucking man. idiot. He got scammed. Hold J- up, Mike. Jason- Who did you pay the original two thousand dollars to? To Hearsale dot Inc., which is the vendor of the Suron. Okay, Hearsale dot Inc. They yes. all have weird names, so that's yeah. fine. Yo, we should get Coffeezilla involved what? in this one. <laughs> have we ever had any of our shipments be held in customs in Mexico? No, they always go direct to the U.S. Right, right? that's because- what I thought. And when you get the message, it's like 
it is stamped like U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. Like it's a legit document that you fill in all the stuff from the company there, your company here. Like it's a pretty legit transaction. My concern, I mean, I feel bad that you lost the 900 bucks to Jason Lawrence, but I hope <laughs> that you can get the 2,500 that you paid to Hearsay Inc. back. I hope there's enough, you know, data there that you're able to, retract that wire yeah at this point that would be great because i mean otherwise that's a that's a thirty five hundred dollar thing that's a sauron so mike what did jason lawrence say to convince you to just venmo um, him a thousand bucks i have actually never spoken with jason lawrence what was the the transaction or what was like the communication between you and somebody that was like yes you just venmo jason lawrence 990 bucks uh, and, and was, he will hand he'll take it. care of it it was basically me just asking if I can pay uh, through Venmo because they, they said Cash App. I'm like, well, I don't use, no one uses Cash App. Dude, you know they were sitting in some they little- They were stoked. They were sitting somewhere and they go, this guy's dumber than we thought. And they high-fived. <laughs> yes. Quick, go make a Venmo. I'll be Cindy. You be uh, whatever, the other guy. I don't think it matters whether it's his real Venmo or not. <laughs> That's what I mean. It is. So I, I did just look- it is impossible to cancel or retract a wire fund once the funds have left your account. Oh, yeah. I was like, I already knew that. Like, that's pretty cut and dry information. Well, Mike, if it makes you feel any better, I lost 2500 bucks in Vegas, and you lost just a little bit more than that on a Saron. Yeah. So life kicks you in the nuts sometimes. Next time, you should just drive down Main Street DL and start throwing $100 bills out the window. I feel like yeah, at least it'll go to some good yeah, possibly <clears throat> the down the drain. Yeah, well, I mean honestly, yeah, you could you could literally light those dollar bills on fire, and at least you would get a little bit of heat out of it, you know. Yeah, that's true, but there's no. Uh, I mean, come on, guys, this is still a little bit of a gamble here. Mike, I'm really rooting for you, honestly, yeah. bro. I am. I am this too. This is for gonna sure. be a great story if they do show up one day. If we show up to the shop and there's eleven boxes out front. And Mike is just sitting there laughing, dude. He's going to be cashing in on all of his Surons. Hand up. If that happens, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Micah was right. But, but if, as of if right now, happens, it is it is not looking so hot for you right now. And I, I feel bad. I'm, I'm trying to make an interesting conversation for the podcast, but I feel bad. But I feel like there were some red flags. Yeah. yeah that's I was proceeding too quickly. Mm -hmm. And there Mike, was, there you're was just doing flags. the work of the people, bro. Getting scammed. Mike, what's that thing around your neck here? Dude, I put the necklace on for the pod. That's pretty baller. Lightning bolt. Can also one of my favorite things. If you guys haven't noticed, I put lightning bolts so on like a everything. third of my yeah. designs. Okay. I, I, I do like the lightning bolt. I feel like it fits the brand. But when I look at you and just being that I know you, I can't say I would pick your emblem to be a lightning bolt. <laughs> Speed. It kind of looks Alexa. like yeah, it, speed. It looks like you're a running. Strikes back. quick. Strikes fast. Yeah, that's <laughs> such a running back. That's yeah, like a running back. Uh, I mean, it kind of looks like a Chargers or yeah, Chargers logo. Uh, but when I saw you wearing that, I was like, it looks like you're like a D three oh off brand running back. What is it? I feel like I would pick your logo to be a moon. A moon. Yeah. You know, is Speaking. it diamonds? Up it, at night. What's on it? Let me see. Up this. all night. Up all uh, night, Mike. Yeah, I mean, they're not real, oh, but... You got backwards, CJ. Where'd oh, you get they're, it? They're not real. GLD. It was oh, like 250 oh, bucks. Yeah. You know, the G, like the, the one that everyone gets Instagram ads for. It's pretty cool. I have always wondered what the like the quality of, of uh, it their seems products fine. are. I not, think, not I think like the like quality is there, but like nothing's real. Yeah. You know? You know how Sick. CJ's got his little ATM side business? My new side business is going to be making Alibaba shipping sites and just advertising just things that Micah wants. <laughs> and then maybe Ryan, <laughs> Jason Lawrence. And there, there's just like a, a steady decrease in like my cash flow and a <laughs> majorly steady increase in Ryan's. I start driving Lambo. I start driving Ranger. <laughs> the problem with those, like the Shop GLD, I think it's cool. I like it. But like... It's very, to me at least, I can tell it's like fake just from looking, you know. And like well, I've, I've and been with in me, like you'll bars always know it's fake, right? It'll never but like I've real. also like oh. been in bars and stuff, and and uh, some of you, like I've just seen people 
and I can tell when they're wearing the shop GLD chain. And I think for some things, it's fine. It does its purpose. Like almost that chain without the lightning bolt is just fine to be a fake chain. You don't need to go to Tiffany and co and spend $15,000 on that chain. Get the, get the $80 chain. Totally fine. But sometimes when you get bigger yeah, jewelry, yeah. if you're trying to make it look like a flex, yeah, then I feel that's like what I'm saying. Absolutely. If you're I don't have to a- do an accent piece. Just fine. But if you're like trying to be really styled out, I don't think there's anything wrong with having fake jewelry. I'm just saying it's like obviously fake, at least to me. So like if you were somebody who's like, I'm going to go to shop GLD, wear this chain around and try to like flex on people. It ain't going to work in well, my fuck, opinion. There goes that sponsor. <clears throat> yeah. Me and CJ went into a jewelry store just to see what they had. And uh, CJ puts on one of these Cuban link necklaces. In yeah. Vegas. Kind of looked like a bulldog in it. It was it like was a sweet. smaller one. It was pretty cool. And he goes, how much is this? And the I guy was, goes, um, that one's 55. I mean, 5,500? No, 55,000. Yeah. And, I and fucking me and CJ look dropped. at each other and he's I don't, like, I'm going to just take this off right now. I don't now. know what he was thinking, <laughs> letting me just try it on that easily. Did, did we look like, we look like a couple of idiot goons walking in there. Yeah. I, no, I, I legit thought it was 10K max. And that's a, I was not. That's I was a lot. not expecting that's it to be fifty five. I figured it was going to be expensive, but not fifty five. That thing was just, that was not worth fifty five. And it was it was pretty small too. It like wasn't yeah. even one that. So was that's really, what really gets me thinking. Oof. Ever since that moment, whenever I see like Jake Paul or rappers or whoever with these big diamond chains, assuming that they are real. How much money? They've got to have a hundred racks in those things, well, if yeah. not more. How about Justin Jefferson, since we got him oh, up there? Yeah, like those chains. He's, he's wearing, wearing them in? during the game. Yeah, that's and, such a flex. And, and Dude, so, I'm pretty sure his teeth are. Uh, yeah, he like, has his amazing. grills are like two hundred grand. Whoa! And he plays with them in. So I, what's up with that? Because like, if they have grills in, that counts as a mouthpiece too. Does it actually? No, I think he still wears a mouth guard oh, he over does? that. I know somebody asked him, like, why would he play in that? And I was like, Baller. this is his TV moment. Like, yeah, this is I when he's too. on TV smart. This is when he should be wearing it. Yeah. I think he's cooler it, it, because of it. Yeah, it works yeah, because frank. it works because Justin Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty cool that he's wearing grills and chains and, and like, Huge I don't know, he's got this look to him, right? But yeah. it but wouldn't be that cool. If he, yeah, you know, but it wouldn't be that cool if he wasn't making catches and and making plays if the way that he is. There is a lot of guys that, that wear chains, though, and grills. Mm-hmm. I remember Marshawn Lynch played with a grill in. But Two, also was really good. Yeah. $200,000 for his grills. And is that, he wears, wow. like, three chains, too. Yeah, yeah, he's... Wow. I feel like if you got hit, and like, or you yeah. things rubbing, wouldn't diamonds fall out of that? I'm sure that, that thing's got to be built well. Diamonds yeah. are tough, dude. They're, like, one of the toughest. That's true. Uh, You know... But they're only as tough as how well they're held in there. But That's true. I'm assuming yeah. they're well made. When did the NFL pass that you could wear jewelry? I don't I know. Like, I think it was kind of recent, recent. Five yeah. years ago. Yeah. Because uh, I remember Odell Beckham Jr. was wearing a Richard Milley watch for a game, and he got fined like $50,000 yeah. for, wear, for wearing a uh, watch. Just like a watch. $250,000 watch. Mm-hmm. All right, Ryan, I know this is going to trigger you. Oh, great. Okay. Nice. So here, just, here we come. Here comes the title. This intro. So, <laughs> Dude, I don't think it's out of the question. The Vikes win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Bro, they're the luckiest team in the NFL. They have won eight games this season by coming back and winning on the last drive of the Dude, game. They're the most entertaining team for Bro, sure. Yes. You're mm-hmm. telling me that a Super Bowl is out of the question? It's like a movie, dude. Go ahead, Ryan. Sorry. Say it. I Say it. Dream Buster. Say it. Ruined my hopes and dreams, bro. I like the Vikings. No, you don't. Now he's saying just you're wrong one podcast. time we beat a team. <laughs> we beat a team like three weeks ago, and you're like, "Oh yeah, they suck." And I was like, "No, actually, they had a lot of hurt players, and we barely beat them." It's going to be interesting to see how they play in the playoffs, now you're which just, might come now true. You're just lying. Well, okay. What did I say? I don't. I hate the Vikings. Justin Jefferson sucks. Kirk mm-hmm. Cousins can kiss my ass. And I hope Adam Thielen falls down the stairs. I never said any of those things. And actually, I first, before any of you guys got into it, said on this very podcast, I said, Vikings year, Super Bowl bound. Let's go, baby. Skull Vikes. I don't remember that. Yep, I did. I can pull it up. It's in one of the other ones. I've got in my group chat. I've texted every time they want. I've got receipts. Dude, straight up, though, like the Vikes have just been basically disappointing us since we were born right i think, I think yeah since they since were in, ever in, yeah since they were invented yeah. they've been disappointing so, minnesota what they've managed to do this season 
been a hell of a turnaround. It's been a hell of a turnaround. And like, I just, I trust them all of a sudden. Really? I'm, I'm like, dude, they're going to clinch this because they continue to do it. It's like a movie every time. Like, like imagine the end of the movie. That's how they do every, it's just like yeah. a different way for the, <laughs> the movie to end in this fantastic win. Bro, mm-hmm. it, it's such a fairy tale story. Yeah, exactly. And every time. The Super Bowl isn't out of the question, bro. If anyone's going to do it, it it's going to be the Vikes, bro. I love your enthusiasm. It's I do. It's not going to happen. If, if the Vikes win the Super Bowl, I will cry. If the Vikes if, win I, a I Super Bowl. I don't cry Bowl, much, but I will actually cry. That Mike will buy the, two Rolexes, <laughs> one for each wrist. Hey, if the Vikes <laughs> if the Vikes win the Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl, though, we, we got to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, where is it I, again? I don't think we'll oh be goodness. able to get there, dude. They already sold tickets, I believe. Let's just figure it out, bro. Right. Yeah, we'll I mean, I'm we'll down, tell them man. we're influencers. Oh, great, yeah. I've influencers, influenced. guys. We can Let's free get up them in here. Tickets. Let's get them in here. Yeah. They can influence We got influencers. Everyone. We're like, I think they're going <laughs> to film the game. <laughs> I hate to crush hopes and dreams, but I, I inquired about Super Bowl tickets. It's in Phoenix. Yeah, and yeah, the okay. cheapest seats, the highest nosebleed you can get is ten thousand dollars a ticket. What? That's what I'm saying. Like, it, and it's thousands of night let's for a hotel. Up, let's just up Ryan's podcast brand deals. I'm just saying, if it does happen, we got to figure out a way to go. I agree, and I'm with you, and I'm positive on the Vikings. I love them, but this is not uncharted territory. We have been here before. I'm just being realistic. Here it goes. Here it goes. No, I, but. Don't oh, let me get in your way, right? What I do want to say is, and I've, say it. I, I don't he's know way say smarter it. than you. It's and so he, hard. You're too stupid to yeah. talk to. No, that's no. what he's trying to tell you. No, uh, the new coach is really, really damn good. And if there's anything about the Vikings season team, the whole thing, obviously Kirk and Justin Jefferson are really good, but they've been there before the new coach. It is amazing how much he has turned that program around. And every week when they win, which has been a lot lately, they post the video of his locker room speech, and you can tell that the players respect him. He loves and respects the players, and like his energy and drive for that team has completely turned it around. And that's the most extraordinary thing, I think, about it. Whether they win because they got lucky or because they played well or whatever, I that coach is amazing. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, the reason that they can just – continue to get these dubs is like the whole team seems to just like just continue to stay positive yep and like that sounds so cliche to say but mm-hmm. you when they do like the mic'd up adam thielen or like yeah. mic'd up any of the athletes like when they were down zero to 33 at halftime they're still just like hey we're gonna turn it around we're gonna turn it around if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be us and like yeah. you just continue to see like those little bits and it's like that's Damn. pretty cool yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they, they have like a certain chemistry that is clearly special and makes them able to pull these things off. They're they're playing like they don't know what quarter it is. Like it's that's what it always seems like. Like that can mean sucking and doing good too, but I don't know, man. I just think attitude's everything with like literally with everything you do in life. It all just comes down to your attitude. Yeah. And well, you that, go into it. And that team has shown it cuz god damn has it been a season. I think it's been harder that they're winning because before you used to just go, "Ah, oh, the Vikings they suck," and then you turned off the game. But now until the last minute of the game or in overtime, you're sitting there on the edge of your seat, like hoping they win. It's like, it's very uh, enthralling. Yeah. It's more I mean, stressful. It, dude, it's straight up. Every game they play is like a movie. Yeah. yeah. Every game. The most entertaining team in the league. They got to be, bro. Everyone's got to just be excited to watch the Vikes at this point because like, who knows what they're going to do. It yeah. is funny because every announcer, every week they've had their doubts about the team and all that. And after last week too, they were just like, I don't know what to say. There's nothing more we can say about them. They have continued to prove themselves and they continue to win. Run on hopes and dreams, baby. Yeah, so. dude. God damn. <clears throat> we could plug um, the year end recap since that's oh, Micah, universal. You, it would have been two weeks. Maybe just mention. Three weeks prior post. Oh, maybe three. just mention. Just when is this like one we're taking a week? January 10th. Oh, this one isn't oh. going for a while. Oh, fuck. I hope the Vikings are still good at this point. Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't even think of that. Okay, all right. What's the date? All right. <laughs> all right. December 27th is when we're filming this right now. So if the Vikings have managed to mess everything up and I look like a total idiot right now. They lose first round of the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, no, I I think they're going to keep doing good. And I'm, I'm excited for it. And when you guys are watching this, it'll seem real time. We ended up taking some time off to go off to Florida, which was really fun. Thanks for uh, waiting and coming back and watching us. Every podcast, every Tuesday for the foreseeable future. 
I guess so. <laughs> Damn. So this is the first podcast of the year? Yeah. Yeah. Number 60. Oh, man. We didn't even really close out last year. Well, thanks for watching us last year. And I, hope you, <laughs> I hope you enjoy what you see this year. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you guys listening to the podcast as we continue to grow it. And the year-end recap video from 2022 is on our main channel. So if you're looking for something to watch there, that has all the goodies from the whole year. And uh, it's pretty fun to watch. So give it a, give it a look. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Peace. Mike, you sent me that tracking number for your uh, Saron? Yeah. They shipped it air, which I highly doubt they would ever ship a lithium battery via air.